breach in five, four, three. What's up, guys? It's Uncle Freedom coming to you on another glorious and well-deserved day off. And today we're going to talk about a top five guns video, specifically my top five guns or categories thereof for SHTF to Tawaki and quite possibly the Minutemen scenario. You'll notice a trend in this video where I'm not going to specifically mention a brand of anything, but I am going to talk about what we should be looking for in that. This video will be followed up by an ammo stockpile video for SHTF. Both of these videos come at the request of my good viewers of the channel who have asked me to give you my unique spin on this situation. For those of you that continually ask, these jackets are from Zero Foxtrot. Check them out. Not an affiliate, just really cool jackets. I love woobies because... I was a grunt, and it was the greatest thing we were ever issued, and uh, I can wear one now. So, top five guns for SHTF. Let's do it. First, number one, a good handgun. Um, by a good handgun, this is my Gen 5 Glock 45 Acro P2 with Surefire X300 Turbo. I am referring to a reliable, semi-automatic, compact, Two full size handgun in a common caliber, 9 mil, 40, 45, 10 mil. My choice for this again is the Glock 45 Gen 5 with the Acro P2 and the X300 Turbo. Everything I do with this gun is kind of based off of a thing. I have a full size grip, I have a reliable enclosed emitter red dot, and I have a light that focuses candela over lumens, which is kind of what I want. This firearm also has the capability, when I talk about your SHTF handgun, that handgun needs to be capable not only in a concealed carry fashion, like I would do here with my Tenacore Malice Soul. This would allow me to conceal carry this firearm, but I can also put this onto my war belt and have a functional firearm that's good in a duty rated capacity. It's going to be the most useful tool you have. There's a reason it's number one, and that is because, well, you should always have this with you. Um, for the YouTube algorithm overlords, this firearm is clear. There's no ammo near me, and I'm in a safe environment where I work on firearms. Yes, I have to make that distinction. But the reason it's useful is you always have it. Not only should you always be concealed carrying, it would be always with you in this environment because this is a problem-solving piece of life-saving equipment. You should be very good with it, very effective with it, be able to hit what you're aiming at. You should have a substantial amount of ammunition, which will be in the next video. But for me, when I talk about having a duty firearm like this, in addition to that, as I want 10 magazines, I want 10 mags at a minimum. Now, the reason being is because if I was to carry this concealed, I would have two magazines. I would have one in the firearm, one on my person and then typically a third mag in my bag. I like having dedicated training, dedicated use, like duty use mags. So for me, 10 magazines at a minimum, that can be expensive depending on the firearm you've chosen, but for Glock, it's pretty easy to hit that. And now that Magpul is making the SIG mags with the A mags, if you're a SIG 320 guy, it just got easier as well. Something we need to think about when we talk about your SHTF handgun selection, whichever brand it is you choose, there's lots of them out there, is above all, it must be reliable. It's got to freaking work. If it doesn't work, it's not any good. Stop lying to yourself. Stop complaining because it's not any good and you're telling everybody how yours is just as good. It's not just as good. If it malfunctions every time you shoot it, it's not just as good. You need a different freaking handgun. I'm going to hurt your feelings on this. You need a reliable, functional handgun. CZ, SIG, HK, Glock, reliable, high-functioning firearms. Um, if I have the option, and since this is my list, I do, I want an optic because I am getting older. This is easier because I'm target-focused. I'm also faster. I'm more accurate, especially at distance. I want that. And I also have to have a light on a firearm. You will, If you noticed in one of the other videos I recently did, I am a light hoe. I like having lights in on firearms. I if I can have one, I would typically prefer to run a full-size weapon light 
such as the X300, the Mod Lite PL350 G2, or the TLR1HL. So that's, for me, that's what I'm going to choose for handgun. And again, my choice is the Gen 5 Glock 45 Acro P2 with a Surefire X300 Turbo. So once we've moved past your handgun, the second most effective and available and useful and important option you're going to have, because remember, this isn't just a prepper SHTF. We're also talking about if you were pressed into fighting against tyranny, you're going to need a rifle, a fighting rifle. A, you're going to need that. So by a fighting rifle, what am I talking about? I am talking about a semi-automatic magazine-fed firearm system with the capability of taking an optic and some form of capability on the front for making that firearm more modular, whether that is you want uh, something like uh, a pursed uh, laser aiming module on there, or if you want, you know, having a white light. For me, no matter what, sling, an optic, a white light, that goes on every single firearm, um, rifle of mine, period, no matter what. So, but above all, yet again, we have to be reliable and accurate with whatever it is that you're shooting. Again, if you shoot it and you cause a malfunction because of how you shoot it, the gun is not reliable. However, if you go out and you shoot it, but all of a sudden it won't fucking cycle some stuff, it's probably not the best deal. Some things we have to look at with this are whatever we're going to feed it, it has to functionally, and reliably, and accurately fire that, that round, right? That's how it is. Again, another video we're going to go over. Ammo considerations for SHTF, how much you should have. Um, but that, that's what it is. You know, from harvesting game to fighting tyranny to defending your homestead, the rifle is kind of where it's at. Like, there's a reason the AR is so good. I, that's my choice. If I'm going to pick one right now out of the ones I have, I'm going to take my LaRue uh, Stealth Upper Receiver, 16-inch barrel. It's got a pre-COVID Aero M4E1 enhanced lower. Uh, EOTech EXPS3-2 with a G33 magnifier. Uh, has a PEC-15 on that one, and then it's got a Mod Light OKW18650 light, and I have a vertical foregrip on the front that is uh, from Rail Scales. I want that capability with the rifle, because not only am I going to go you know, possibly fight bad dudes, I'm going to defend my home, but I can also use it for pest control around my property. That is one of the most useful tools that you can absolutely have. And when we start talking about a rifle, I want 14 mags, absolute bare minimum, 14 magazines. Right. The reason being is a standard combat load. If you were infantry with seven mags, if you were doing reconnaissance, it could be upwards of 12. But we'll go with seven as a good baseline. So if you have seven magazines in your standard loadout, having a minimum of 14 gives you a second full loadout worth of magazines. These will be carried in places like a salt pack plus the stuff you got on your kit. But 14 mags at a minimum for this. And like I said, ammo comes in another video. Number three is going to be your shotgun. Hmm. Buds rejoice, man. Shotgun. Um, here's where I'm going to get different, though. I'm a pump shotgun fan, but I do believe there are three very reputable, very amazing semi-automatic shotguns. You have the new Beretta, what is it, 301 Patrol. You have the new Beretta 1301. Both are chef's kiss. And then you have the Benelli M series of shotguns um, that are semi-auto. Those are all great. Here's the problem we run into with them, though is you lose some capability for what we want the shotgun for. You have an ultimate shotgun for the Minuteman scenario, but we lack some on the backside of this where we talk about just HS SHTF scenarios. So I'm going to say a pump gun. For me, personally, it's a Mossberg 590 because I like being able to shoot 3.5-inch shells as well as shoot 2 and 3 quarter shells or Federal Shorty shells. It doesn't matter. I can run anything I want out of it. Um, but what I do with my shotgun is I have three barrels. So barrels are really easy to swap out. You can tailor this out kind of the same way we tailor ammo in an AR platform, but we can tailor barrels to make our situation better. For me, that is going to be a 26 to 28 inch um, beaded barrel, and that is going to be my bird gun barrel or squirrels or whatever you want to kill with it, uh, depending on how it goes. And then I run a somewhere between 18 and 22 inch barrel that has a red dot on it. That is my defensive tactical version of the gun. And then I have a 20-inch rifled slug barrel for shooting Sabo slugs. Period. 12-gauge, pump action, multiple barrels, because you're not going to get one that's going to do everything great. And if you start chopping things off, it's now a 
pretty pathetic bird gun. Shotguns are great because they're versatile and you can take all kinds of stuff with them, but they make different barrels for a reason. Stop trying to make your freaking square peg fit into the round hole. Just get additional barrels, right? I know, I'm telling you, spend money. Yes, I am. I don't care who you pick. Just make sure it's reliable and then do that. Ammo is going to be a fun one to discuss on this, but that is how I view it with a shotgun. For me, period, it's going to get a red dot on anything that I require ultimate accuracy on, and I'm going to want a white light and a sling. That is a given on any freaking shotgun I have. Again, 590 is my favorite version of it. Magpul makes great furniture. Other companies do as well. So moving past your shotgun, number four. What do y'all think number four is? Okay. The 22 people are like bouncing up and down in the background, but no, it's not a 22 rifle right now. It's going to be your bolt gun. Now, your bolt gun serves a couple of different functions. Not only can it help you harvest bigger animals at longer distances, because that's kind of what they're good for. If we transitioned your SHTF loadout to your Minutemen situation, because the world is an uncertain place, and we can all envision that if we went SHTF tomorrow, we're going to get invaded. Like, it's going to happen. Um... But I'm saying a bolt gun, and bolt guns are kind of a different world. I am going to want with a bolt gun, I want a full powered round. I want an optic, and I personally want in a magazine. Uh, that That is me. There are other things that I require on mine for different reasons. I always want a heavier contoured barrel because it deals with heat better, keeping me from stringing shots at like shot two or three. It enables me to shoot volume a little more out of a bolt gun. Um, I am not a 300 Win Mag guy, though cartridges like 7PRC and 300 PRC are fantastic. For me, if I'm going to do this, we could go all the way down to 6 Creedmoor and 243 to 300 PRC or 7 Rum. But I'm talking, for me, if I'm picking this, I'm taking a 308 because I have tons of ammo out of a 308. I know pretty much everything about that cartridge, what it's doing at what distance, out of what barrel lengths. So for me, if I'm going to pick one of mine for this world, it's going to be a Bagara B14 HMR. Those have a heavy contoured threaded barrel, which enables me to put a suppressor, um, to put a muzzle device on that is a suppressor host uh, for my Sandman. It also, I have the capability on that. I have a 20 MOA rail on it for mounting up my optics, so I can get a little bit lo a longer distance out of it. I have a 22-inch barrel, 5R rifled, 308 barrel heavy contour with bottom metal and an AICS magazine. AICS magazines are interchangeable magazines, five rounds, 10 rounds, whatever. Personally for me, I love a 10 round mag. I also require a 60 degree bolt throw because it is faster and more efficient when I run the gun. So once we kind of set up that thing, I don't care what you pick, but it has to be accurate. When we start playing with the bolt gun game, a bolt gun that is not sub MOA accurate is a waste of freaking money. Combat accuracy is great, and it functions flawlessly in something like a battle rifle platform that is semi-auto, but in a bolt gun, precision is the name of the game. And if you're not stringing, sub him away stuff, you either have a round problem, a gun problem, or you suck at shooting. It's one of those three. So I would say with this, we're going to talk more about the ammo in another video, but that's going to be very consistent on what I pick. I'm going to have options and tailor this out, but I'm going to want a good optic. Night Force for uh, Night Force four to thirty two, um, you know I want higher magnification so I can observe and get more intelligence with that optic. If pressed into the Minuteman role, I can also identify whether or not I can shoot that deer from wherever I'm at. Um, so that is where it's at. But I also I want a Christmas tree reticle, something with a ranging reticle inside of it, so that I can hold off, get better shots for windage and stuff like that. I also need repeatable. Uh, slippable turrets that are locking that dial true period i'm going to select mrad if you don't know why go back i'll leave a link over here that'll take you to the uh, minuteman marksman's rifle where we talk about selecting your optic i go in depth about why you need those things in that video but full power rifle rounds there are some that i would say win better in this world if you are a hand loader something like 30-06 is, is a viable option, but if you're not a hand loader, you'll lose some things. You also have a longer cartridge, which means it takes longer to cycle the firearm. Same thing with a Magnum round. For me, 7mm 08, 6.5 Creedmoor, 308. Those are just amazing rounds. 6.5 Creedmoor almost cheats the win. 7mm 08 
is burning same amount of powder, same patterns of your hand loader as your 308 with a more ballistically efficient bullet with higher sectional density. It's awesome. But I have so many rounds of 308, that's probably what I would have liked to do. But again, we'll talk about ammo in the next video. So I just want to lay groundwork for this. Um, but yeah, and another thing that I'm going to require out of my bolt gun. So when we look at a bolt gun itself, I want a heavy contour barrel with a threaded muzzle. I want a Picatinny style scope mounting solution with a higher magnification optic with a milling and ranging reticle. I want bottom metal that allows me to use AICS pattern magazines. I want a very good adjustable crisp trigger, 60 degree bolt throw. And above all on my stock, dual magazine or dual sling swivels in the front to mount my bipod because bipods are important. The sling is also important. But then in the stock, I want an adjustable length of pull and an adjustable comb height so that I can get as perfect behind that rifle as I can because accuracy is the game when we break these out. So after your bolt gun, what do you think's next? Yes, 22 people jump up and down. It's your time now. A 22 long rifle. I think 22 long rifle bolt guns are tons of fun. You can have a great time with them. They make excellent trainers. I highly recommend them if you're getting into the game of long range. Get a semi-automatic or a bolt action 22 long rifle and learn how to shoot effectively and run a bolt gun. But that isn't what I want here. I want a semi-automatic 22 long rifle that is magazine fed. Yes, the tube feds exist and they are very nice. And if you're nostalgic, they're great. I still have some. But if I'm going to pick, I want a magazine fed. And if I'm going to pick a magazine fed, there is really one company that does it well. And that is Ruger with their 1022. That's my choice. That is what I would recommend to you to buy. This isn't like bolt guns where I'm like, oh, I pick a caliber into here or ARs where it's like, ah, oh, as long as it's reliable, you're good and you can do these things. Or handguns, it's like, yeah, pick which one you like. Or shotguns, like, do you have a favorite brand? 22 semi-automatic Ruger 1022. Period. The aftermarket support is insane. I can put any stock I want. Personally, for me, I like the Hogue, like over-molded stocks that are a little flatter on the front, more, more shaped like a Macmillan. Um, I also love the fact that I can run different magazines for it. So back up real quick because I forgot this. In your bolt gun, also shotguns, magazine fed is no. Just It's just no. It's an abomination. It shouldn't exist. No. Just don't do that. Bolt guns, AICS pattern magazine, six to nine magazines. Maybe have a couple of five rounders and then the rest 10. There is no reason for you to have 10 five round mags and then like five 10 round mags. 10 rounders are where it's at. You get more shots, have a couple of five rounders in case the world hasn't ended and we have to maintain by like restrictions for game harvest. For your 22 though, if you are running the 10 round rotary mags, which is fine, do that. But I'm going to say have 10 of those. But I'm also going to tell you, have five to six 25. So the BX25 mags for the Ruger 1022, it's fantastic. Personally, for me, my 1022, I have a Hogue rubber over molded McMillan front profile, free floated bedded stock with a Ruger 1022 bull barrel in mine that is threaded on the end. So it will accept a suppressor. I have a little bit different bolt catch in mine. Um, and then I run a, I think it's a Timney trigger that I have in it now, the trigger pack from them. That's what I do. Now, optic, it depends on what you want to do for it. I ran the Vortex. I think it's a 2 to 7, 22 for a really long time. That was pretty prominent. Um, but what I've gone to now on mine is I have the Vortex, um, the Viper PST 2 to 10 with the EBR 4C reticle. No, you're not going to run your 22 long rifle out to 700 yards but it lets me get more information. I can be more precise with it. I can observe things if I need to, and I can pick off little critters that I may need for the stew pot later. It's just easier to do. You can also, while you're trying to work on your fundamental skills, as you're taking shots at 100 yards, 10 power will at least allow you to spot your own hits. You can learn a lot of stuff by staying on the gun and observing what you see downrange. So for me, Ruger 1022, Hogue over-molded McMillan front end, dual sling swivels in the front. I have a bipod I run on mine. It's a Harris bipod. Um, and then, like I said, 10 of the 10-round magazines and then 5 to 6 of the 25-rounders for the Ruger 1022. Ruger 1022s eat almost anything you put into them. They're exceptionally reliable. They work fantastically well. They're more than accurate enough for what we need with a 22, And they're just fun. 
You can teach kids to shoot. You can work on marksmanship skills without burning up more expensive ammo. But that's going to be something I'm going to pick all the time. So there you go, guys. My top five firearm categories that you're going to need to have in your possession prior to SHTF or the Minutemen scenario breaking out. All of these firearms, with the exception of the 22, can be pressed into the Minutemen role if you find yourself in that world suddenly. We go Red Dawn. This is not a lost cause. Four of the five can be used, and I guess technically you could use the 22 for sentry um, removal if you know you're super high speed and ghost recon is all you think in your brain. Four of the five can be used in this world, and that is your, your handgun, your primary fighting rifle, your bolt gun can go over to a sniper weapons platform, your shotgun can be used for breaching doors, all of that stuff. Your handgun can be used for concealed carry, overt, covert, whatever, and your rifle is going to be able to go from CQB out to five to 600 yards. If you don't know about the requirements for a Minuteman's rifle, take a look up here. I'll leave a link to defining the Minuteman rifle. That ought, to be a good, that ought to be a good primer on some things you can look at for your rifle system. There's four videos in that series itself. So guys, there you go. Some fun thoughts today. Something a little different. My top five categories of guns for SHTF and what could devolve into the Minutemen scenario. So I hope you found this informative and entertaining. There will be another video following this one up in a couple of days that will be my ammo stockpile, how much and how I go about it for SHTF, or in this case, just whenever the next ammo scare is. It's what it is. So guys, take care of yourself, take care of each other. Until next time, I'll see you later.